Welcome to the Words to Empower podcast, featuring Bishop Frank Stewart, pastor of the Acts Ministry in Conway and North Little Rock, and now, Pastor Stewart. Welcome back to the Acts Ministry broadcast. So glad to have you again today. Still talking about the book of Daniel as we see the end approaching, as we see the coming of the Lord near. Daniel helps us. Daniel and the book of Revelation are books of incredible prophecy. And it does that by using people and, and, and using dreams and interpretations and angels and what was going to happen in the last days. In chapter number four, we have Nebuchadnezzar, which was the head of gold, meaning that probably the greatest of the kingdoms to live on earth was Babylon. And we're living in a Babylonian system. So here he has a dream. And he had a dream about a tree. It grew with strong height, therefore reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it, and the fowls of the heaven dwell in the the branches thereof, and all all flesh was fed of it. I saw in the vision of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and a, and a holy one came down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Hew down the tree, cut off the branches, shake off his leaves, and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless, leave the stump of his root in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass, in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. This is a dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, and he had an incredible dream concerning himself. And Daniel interpreted his dream. And the Bible says when Daniel heard the dream, he remained astonished for one hour. The dream was so man-boggling. It was such an incredible dream for a whole hour. Daniel just remained astonished in silence and quietness. He was just so, so emotionally overwhelmed with the dream that the king had given him. Daniel said that he would the dream was to the enemies of the king, but it was unto him. Daniel told him in so many words that he need to rule with humility. He need to rule with righteousness and, and control the iniquities of his heart. And do right about about the poor, and and he told him all of this. Nebuchadnezzar heard it at first, but it got past him. He didn't meditate on it. It didn't get in his spirit because the Bible says twelve months later he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, "Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty?" And the Bible says, while the words were in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and give it it to whomsoever he will. So the Bible says the same hour this happened to him. God gave him a vision. He gave him a warning. This is is very important for us as we study the book of Daniel. He gave him prophecy. He gave him prophecy. How do we react when prophecy is given to us? Because the Bible has given us incredible prophecy about the coming of the Lord. What is going to happen? We see earthquakes in diverse places. We see all the things that are happening. Now, we've got to understand something. We say the earthquakes, and we think about from our point of view, we think about away from America. But you must understand, this is talking to Jerusalem. It's talking to the Israelites. So if something happens in, to us as an earthquake, then it's in a foreign place. It's in a different place. We have to understand that. How did he react to prophecy? And now we have to gauge ourselves. We can look at Nebuchadnezzar, but we've got to gauge our, ourselves to make it applicable. He heard it. But it looked like 12 months later, he had forgotten it. He had fallen asleep 
concerning what God had said to him about his pride, his body's arrogant. What would happen if he got lifted up in his arrogance? There would be judgment. Judgment would come. But after 12 months, the king went right back into the arrogance and the pride and building himself up and saying that he had done all this by his might and with his hands. And the Bible says the voice of the Lord just fell from heaven. And what is going to happen to the king for seven years? Seven years, the king is going to be on all fours like an animal. He's going to eat grass like an ox. He's going to stay seven years crawling around in his royal robe. Seven years. Why? Because he did not adhere to the word of God. He did not adhere to the prophecy that was on his life. There was prophecy on his life, but yet and still he did not adhere to it. What is, what is God saying to us? What God is saying to us is that we must make sure, we must make sure that when we hear the prophecy that comes our way, that we pay attention to it, that we pay attention to it. We don't just blow it off. We don't just, we don't just say, well, it's good, and we listen for a day or a couple of days or a month. But we have to understand that God is saying something to us, and God is faithful. It is impossible for God to lie. Um, but Nebuchadnezzar, he was so full of himself and his arrogance that he began to boast about what he had done. And immediately the hand of the Lord came from heaven. And here is the great king for seven years on, on all fours and eating grass like an ox. So after seven years, his understanding his his knowledge returned and this is what he says in Daniel chapter 4 and verse 34 and at the end of the days I Nebuchadnezzar lifted up mine eyes unto heaven and my understanding returned unto me and I blessed the most high and I praised and honored him that liveth forever whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from the generation to generation and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can say, stay his hand or say unto him, what are you doing? At the same time, my reason returned unto me. And for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me. And my counselors and my Lord sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are true and his ways, judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. So here he had to learn the hard way, the difficult way. He had to learn, you know, it's, it's something about not believing that fat meat is greasy. It's something about some folks that just love making life more difficult than what it needs to be. Some folks love creating unnecessary struggles in their lives. Stay tuned for more of Frank Stewart. And now for some special announcements. Thanks for partnering with the Acts Ministries. We value your service and your donations. That's why we've made it easy to make contributions to support our ministry. Simply go to your web browser and click the search bar and type in xministriesonline.org. Then click Donate Online. It's really that easy. For mobile giving, text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242. That's Simple Give. And now, more of Pastor Frank Stewart. This is the spirit of Nebuchadnezzar. Now, God was gracious and God was merciful unto him, as you will see how he dealt with Belshazzar. So with Nebuchadnezzar for seven years, and you say, how's that merciful? Crawling around for seven years on, you, on your knees and your hand and eating grass, and you're the king. He was merciful because he could have destroyed him. He could have taken him immediately when he made this mistake. He didn't. He didn't. 
But the point I want to make and I want to validate is that the problem with Nebuchadnezzar was he didn't adhere to the prophecy that was on his life. And brothers and sisters, there are many people that are going to miss the coming of the Lord. They're going to miss the greatest event in the history of the world that's getting ready to happen now. And that is Jesus is coming back. They're going to miss it because they will not adhere to what the Bible is saying. And because they sometimes think it's an ancient book. It's a book that's outdated and equated. It is not. It is a book that you can take out some of the pages and, and make them very applicable to uh, what we read in the newspaper today. So this happened to him. And he praised God. And he came away with understanding that God rules in the kingdom of men. God is in charge. God is in control. Not man. God is the one. No one, the Paul said, in him we live and we move. We have our existence. So we don't want to be like Nebuchadnezzar. We want to be able to hear what God is saying. Hear the word of God. Hear the prophecy. Examine the prophecy. Be able to look at the prophecy and be able to see when it is, when it is fulfilled. Because in so doing, we're able to project the coming of the Lord when it's going to be when it's going to be sometimes we don't want to do that but we we can we can we can project the coming of our Lord and that's very important that that happens that's very important that it happen because if we don't know when he's coming in the season and the time then he's going to come on us like a thief in the night and if he comes to us as a thief in the night then we're going to miss it. And brothers and sisters, we cannot afford to miss this great event of the Lord coming back for his bride, for his church. So Nebuchadnezzar, what do we learn from it? Pay attention to prophecy. Pay especially attention to prophecy on your life. But pay even more attention to what the Bible says when the Bible talks about uh, the prophecy that is going to take place in the last days. It is going to happen. It is going to happen. Nothing can stop it from happening. This will transpire. This will happen. Jesus is coming back. The Bible is clear. It says it over and over again. It says it that for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, dead in Christ shall rise first. We that are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds. And so shall we forever be with the Lord. He's coming. He's coming. Look at the prophecy. Be not like Nebuchadnezzar. When the prophecy came from Daniel. It only He ignored it after 12 months. He didn't rehearse it. He didn't keep it alive in his memory. And he ended up doing exactly what Daniel told him the prophecy had said exactly brothers and sisters let us not fall asleep but let us be diligent let us be awake for the coming of the Lord is soon for mobile giving text the amount you wish to donate to 501-302-4242 the Axe Church in North Little Rock is located at 1224 Franklin Street for more information Go to AxeMinistriesOnline.org or give us a call at 501-329-2055. Thank you for tuning in to the Axe Ministry Podcast. The Axe Church is located at 1423 Indian Street in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tune in each day to hear an inspiring word from Pastor Frank C.